Hello again, YouTube. This is Prophet Howard. Um, I have another broadcast for you. Uh, the, the name of my church is the Congregation of the Most High. And this congregation, through much research of the scriptures and through much research of history and other books associated with the scriptures, um, through my ministry, I preach and follow what's called the way. The way is what Christianity was before it became Christianity after Constantine made his decrees in 321 AD and between 313 and 321 AD some of the laws and decrees that he passed led to what we call Christianity today. Again my name is Prophet Howard and I would like to entitle this message today Is Gambling Sin. Is it a sin to gamble? Is it a sin to take money and take chances with your money to increase and make more money? Now, based on pastors, Christian pastors, by the way, let me emphasize that, based on what Christian pastors and some people in other religions, Je Jehovah's Witnesses and other religions as well, teach that gambling is a sin. But I want you to understand something about sin on today. And with the time that I have, if I need to make a part two, I'll make a part two. And those of you that watch my videos, I notice that you don't watch both videos. For you to get an understanding of the things that I teach, if I have multiple parts to my videos, you need to watch both videos. So, with that being said, I want to get into this topic, Is Gambling a Sin? I could start out real quick and I could just end it right now. I could say no, turn the video off, and that'd be the end of it. Because if you understand what gambling is, then you understand that gambling is not a sin. Because many things fall into the category of gambling. So, if you understand that, then you would understand that gambling is not a sin. But because we live in a world where people are full of their own philosophies and customs and ways and we attempt to influence other people to follow the ways that we have made for ourselves, in our world, in our culture, gambling has been labeled as a sin and you have many people that are doing all the things that the Most High did say was sin and feeling okay with it. But the minute they go in a casino, the minute they go get a lottery ticket, the minute they do anything in gambling, they feel condemnation. Well, I got news for you. You need to study the scriptures. And those of you that belong to the quote-unquote sanctified Christian church, which if you do your research, a lot, of, a lot of Christianity is based on astrology anyway, and it's based on sun deities. And it's based on Baal, which is one of the seven princes of, of hell. If you do your research and you find out who the true Messiah is, Yehoshua, and who the true Most High and One God is, Yah, then you would understand that He's the only lawmaker. He's the only judge. And anything that He touched upon and made a law, that's what is to be followed. Now I'm going to tell you flat out, that the only true religion, the only true belief system is the scriptures. The only true belief system by name was called the way. And the ancient Hebrew text, which I'm learning, I don't know everything there is about it, but I know people that I ask questions and I learn things from that know about it. The whole entire scripture is based upon this way, which is called the way. And I'm going to get into the scriptures and just show you this. Again, if I have to make multiple parts, you need to watch. First of all, let's talk about this definition of the word gambling. Gambling means to play games of chance for money. To bet or bet on an uncertain outcome as of a contest. To take a risk in the hope of gaining an advantage or a benefit. So, by definition, which I tell people all the time, don't just throw words out, out there and know what they mean, because I really don't care what your pastor teaches. I care what the Most High has taught. And if the Most High didn't say anything about it, 
there is no sin. And I'm going to get into that and show you. Because gambling by definition is anything that we do with money that's uncertain in the hope of gaining more money. And our economy is, is, is a gamble to go to college because you may not be able to find a job when you get out. It's a gamble to buy real estate because you may not be able to keep that rented out or you may not be able to sell that piece of, piece of property. It's a gamble to start a business because your business may go out of business. Everything is a gamble. It's a gamble going out of the house. You may not return to the house. So, you have these preachers who make things sin when the real sin is your extortion. You're extorting 10% out of the people to live your luxurious lifestyle when all the prophets of old had trades and had something that they owned that they did not twist the arms of the people to get. Now, let's read this definition of extortion because the scripture plainly says the extortioner, extortioner shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Extortioner, the practice of obtaining something through force or threats. For you to say that somebody is going to be cursed for not giving a certain amount of their money, that is a threat. For you to, to, to even mention that a person may be harmed physically or financially is a threat to gain for yourself. That's a threat. The illegal use of one's official position or powers to obtain property, funds, or patronage. That's the sin. That's the sin because the scripture plainly tells us you shall not steal. Now I don't even have to go into the definition of stealing. But you need to understand that when it comes to money, gambling is, is, a, is only a sin if you break a law or a commandment or a commandment, excuse me, instituted by the Most High Himself or by His Messiah who was instituting the Most High's command, not His own command, the Most High's command. So you got pastors nowadays that want to, want to, in fact, I ain't going to go into names, but the person that started all of this stuff was allegedly said to be a homosexual. So, you know, that's the real sin. And that person, if that's true that he was a homosexual, he shouldn't have been focusing on whether or not a person was smoking cigarettes or drinking or, or, or playing a number on a ferry boat. He should have been focusing on his sexual orientation, his sexual belief system, because the Bible has laws in Leviticus 17 and 21 against that. So, if, if you know, you got a lot of people that, they take the easy things and run with it. But the Most High also commanded you not to eat certain foods. Are you eating those foods? The Most High also commanded you to, to keep the Sabbath, which you're not keeping if you're going to church on Sunday and playing your golf on Saturday. So you need to understand these things that you're focusing on. Now I want to go to the scripture. First scripture I want to go to is found in Mark chapter 7. Verses 6 through 9. I'm going to go to something that Yehoshua, his name was not Jesus. I know you, I know some of you uh, 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 try to battle me on that, but his name was not Jesus. Do your research. The name Jesus has no Hebrew indication of meaning salvation. It just doesn't. I mean, you can say what you want. It just doesn't. It's words in the scripture I told you before. That I don't say that the Bible is infallible because the Bible has the term Jew in it, which in the Greek, there's no J. In the Hebrew, there's no J. So, originally, historically, it has been proven that anywhere you see the word Jew, in the original text, was the word Hebrew. But anyway, Mark chapter 7, verse 6. Where have the science prophesied of you, hypocrites, as it is written, The people honored me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. How be it in vain do they worship me, teaching for doctrines the commandments of men. Now I want to tell you something. Some of y'all don't need to gamble, but it's my job to show you what the truth is, 
And a lot of people have been wondering about this, so I'm going to show you the truth. Whether you agree with me or not, you can make your little videos. If you don't agree with me, I don't care. Because if I see them, you know I'm going to come right back with facts. So, you know, anybody that see this video or whatever and try to make a little video against it, then I'm going to come back with the facts. And the fact is that the only lawgiver and judge is the Most High. And his name is Yah. And if he didn't talk about something directly or indirectly, if it's not in the scriptures as law, as commandments, then it's not a sin. Plain and simple. Whether you agree with it or not, whether you're against it or not, the only thing, the only person, the only being that can cause something sin is the Most High. And that's what we need to understand. Because see, you committing the sin of idolatry by bowing down to these pastors and following their commandments. He said, Teach it for doctrines the commandments of men, for laying aside the commandment of God, ye hold to the tradition of men as the washing of pots and cups. He was using an example of what the Pharisees was doing. And many other such like things ye do, like saying gambling is a sin. Because if, if, if that was true, then it would be a sin to have a business. It would be a sin to do anything to try to gain extra money. Verse 9, For where ye reject the commandment of God, that ye may keep your own tradition. Now the Most High told you to love your neighbor as yourself. He told me to love my neighbor as myself. That's the second most greatest commandment in the law. And I'm, guess what? I'm going to be honest with you. I don't always keep that commandment. See, in the way, he goes by the heart. He goes by the heart intent because he already knows that we're not going to keep his commandments all the time. But the fact, the most important thing is that you enter into covenant with him and that you and your own covenant, you make that effort to walk in his ways and to keep his statutes. And where you fall short, remember Yehoshua said, I am the way and the truth and the life. And no man comes to the Father but by me. So it's up to him whether you make it anyways. Now, he said that you reject the commandment of God, that you may keep your own tradition. Now in verse 14 and 15, this is what he said. And when he had called all the people unto him, he said unto them, Hearken unto me, every one of you, and understand. And that's what he's saying through me to you. Hearken unto his word and understand. There is nothing, 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 from without a man that entering into him can defile him. But the things which come out of him, those are they that defile him. See, in the way, you follow the dietary commandments because they're there. He commanded you not to eat and to abstain from certain foods. But if you choose not to abstain from them foods, that is not going to defile you and is not going to send you to hell. He said, Are you so without understanding also? Do you not perceive that whatsoever thing from without enters into the man, it cannot defile him, because it enters not into his heart, but into the belly and goeth out into the drought purging on meat. So he's talking about meat right there. See, that's what I'm saying. I don't eat certain foods because he didn't eat certain foods. And that's one of the many ways that I show and pay tribute to him and keep covenant with him because he told my ancestors not to eat certain foods. Now, anybody can be saved even though... It's, a, it's I mean, the tribe of Israel, the house of Israel, and the house of Judah are the chosen tribes. But if you read Isaiah 56, those other people from other tribes can also be saved and can also serve the Most High. But he said, for from what he said, that which cometh out of the man that defileth the man. For from within, out of the heart of man, proceed evil thoughts, adulteries, fornications, murder, thefts, covetousness wickedness, deceit, lasciviousness, and evil eye, blasphemy, pride, foolishness. All these things come from within and defile the man. Now, I'm telling you plainly that these things do not defile 
a person, if you go get a lottery ticket right now, if you choose to get a lottery ticket, that's your choice. But the most high is not going to hold a lottery ticket to get you unless, okay, let me give you an example. It's covetousness if, and it's greed, which is, is listed as a sin and as the sin of idolatry and the most high condemned idolatry in the prophets. So if you're the type of person that you already have more money than you know what to deal with and you choose to go and to play a number or whatever because you want the other person's money or whatever your twisted reason may be, you already have enough money. You already, if you got a hundred million dollars, that's probably more than you can even spend in a lifetime unless you just completely just 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 wild out and go crazy and just go on the spending spree or whatever. Greed is when you are full and satisfied and you continue to eat and you continue to seek more. That's when it's a sin. A, a poor man or a man with an average income, barely making it, or or you you know you 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 can you can help people, but you can't do certain things. And you choose to go and you go to college, or you choose to start a business, or you choose to do something else that's associated with gambling in the hopes of gaining more. Then yeah, it's okay because I'm gonna go to the scripture and I'm gonna show you. In the scripture, the, the the only the one of the very few things that's even in the law about money. Exodus 22 and 25 it says this. So I'm going to show you. Now I already exposed these preachers, some of which are paying your tithe to pay off their lawsuits for things that they're doing that are in the law for them not to do. So. These same guys, like Bishop Betty Long, who had to pay maybe $16 million <coughs> or something to satisfy the debt that he owed some guys of the same sex as him, that's not his female wife that he had sexual encounters with, took your time, which he has preached against God. Yes, he has. And paid these people off. Who's the sinner? Who's the sinner? Now, based on what I'm about to read to you, Exodus 22 and 25, you tell me who's the sinner. It says, If thou lend money to any of my people that is poor by thee, thou shalt not be to him as unusual. Neither shalt thou lay upon him usury. Now, I've watched TBN, and I've heard them literally tell people to borrow money to give to TBN. Literally. That's laying upon a person usury, and that is a sin, because you're breaking the law that was instituted by the Most High. Pay their loan stores. He said, don't lay upon somebody of his people that is poor by the usury. Let me tell you, the definition of poor is somebody that doesn't have enough to do all the things that they need to do with their money. Excuse me, I screw me. Throw this dry. That's the definition of poor. In fact, statistically, they say that if you do not either have one million dollars in your possession, fifty thousand dollars per year, then you fall in the bottom ninety-nine percent. Which, by the way, there is no middle class. There's the rich and the poor. The haves and the have-nots. That's all it is. That's all it is. So if you think that your little voting is going to change things, think again, because the majority of the people in the high office positions have brotherhoods and they belong to secret societies together. So do not think that a governor or, or senator or any of these people are going to change anything significant. Now, First John chapter three. Moving right along, First John chapter three, verse three.
First John chapter 3, verse 3. And every man that hath this hope in him purifies himself, even as he is pure. Whosoever committeth sin transgresses also the law, for sin is the transgression of the law. Not your pastor's law, not your grandmama's law, not your uncle's law, but the law. The law of the Most High. When you transgress against things that are written in this book as law, you have sinned. Verse 5, And ye know that he was manifested to take away our sins, and in him is no sin. See, that was the job of the Messiah as the high priest. The high priest atones for sin. And the Messiah, Yehoshua, is the high priest for the Most High. His job is to atone for our sins. Now the Messiah's job is also to show us the way and to lead us along the path of the Most High. And the Messiah himself, as recorded in this book, mentioned very little or nothing about this subject called Gamma. Now, verse 28 of De chapter 28, Deuteronomy, you shall command, Yah shall command the blessing upon thee in, the, in thy storehouses, and in all thy settest thy hand unto, and he shall bless thee in the land which Yah the Most High giveth. Okay, let's get one thing straight. A storehouse is not a bank, it's a barn, and it has to do with crops. And that's, that's just the way it is, that's the facts. So if your pastor, <coughs> excuse me, if your pastor is changing what a storehouse is, then your eyes should book up at him. Now, <coughs> a couple more scriptures and then I'm just going to close on this subject. I want to show you something. In Acts 24, it's plain as day that Paul, the Apostle Paul was accused of following the way. Which means that the Apostle Paul, when I read his writings, I only keep what I know as way teachings. Because, let's just get one thing straight right now. The Romans have, since the beginning, since the early origins of the way and of this belief system, have changed, have changed many things. And I want you to know that if your pastor or you or anybody else is changing the law of the Most High, then you are a, a false messiah. You are an antichrist. The word anti means instead of. So if, if, if you are changing the teachings of the Most High, then that makes you an anti-Most High. That makes you an anti-Messiah. That makes you a false Messiah. Because it's not your job. It's not your job to make things a sin that's not sin. We have the scripture to tell us what's a sin and what's not a sin. Sin is the breaking of the law. Not your law. Not the commandments of men. The law. I got a couple more scriptures and I'm going to close. In Acts 24 and 5 it says, For we have found this man a pestilent fellow and a mover of seditions among all the Jews, or shall I say how it was originally, among all the Hebrews throughout the world, and a ringleader of the sect of the Nazarenes. Nazarenes, are, that's a Hebrew sect. Do your research. And then if you look down at verse 14, here's Paul's explanation. But this I confess unto thee, that after the way which they call heresy, you see that? The way which they call heresy. So worship I the God of my fathers, believing all things which are written in the law and the prophets. So, if you believe the law, and if you understand the law, then you understand that the only person that can, that can say something is a sin is the Most High. If the Most High has not said in His Word that something is a sin, we have the law of the Most High in this book called the Bible. And if He has not labeled something a sin, then it's not a sin. I thought my uh, videos were still 15 minutes. That's good. But I only need a little more time anyway to finish saying what I have to say on this. So, I don't care who doesn't agree with me. The truth of the matter is that the Most High makes commandments. Not you. Not your pastor. Your pastor is just a mere man with sins himself that's elevating himself to a place that he shouldn't be at. Plain and simple. And me, as a as a minister, as a as a prophet, as 
as someone who speaks on the Most High's behalf in the earth, I understand that it's not my job to label something being a sin. It's my job to show people what sin is, show people the consequences of sin, show people what the Most High wants and desires for them in their life, and those and, and those types of things. It's not my job to say, okay, this is a sin, and the Bible hasn't said it. That is a sin, the Bible hasn't said it. That's not my job. So, I want to go to Acts. 17 verse 23 to, to, through 28 and I'm going to close after that Acts chapter 17 and Paul made it plain as day and this excellent scripture for you to understand the Most High and for all of you who are going around thinking in your mind that the Most High is not going to allow you to have food on your table because you were either not able to pay a tithe or something else came up or you had this desire in you to play a lottery ticket or or you have this desire in you to, to go to a casino. You know what? These, these are games. They're games. The lottery, casino, those games. Now, your stewardship and your management of, over your money is different. See, he holds you accountable for that. Because if you choose to play these games, I want you to know it's not a sin. But I want you to know that it is a sin if any one of us become a bad steward and become an idolater idolizing money to the point where we're not taking care of our our families and things of that nature. It may not be covetousness if you're broke, but it can fall into the category of idolatry if your attitude and your desire and the way you go about it is wrong. It can fall into the category of idolatry. But for most people that I know that's playing the lottery is not idolatry. It's not covetousness. It's need. This economy is bad. And these people are taking two, three dollars from their unemployment check and hoping that they could turn that three dollars into three million dollars and get rid of all this foolishness called debt. There's nothing wrong with that. You should want to get rid of your debt. But we have to be smart in doing so. But I just want to get to the point of the fact of the matter that it's not a sin to play a lottery ticket. It's not a sin to go to a casino. It's other factors that could make it a sin, which in most cases, in poor people, it's not, I mean, you're supposed to want more for yourself. It's not a sin because you want more for yourself. Now remember, it's other factors. Loving your neighbors yourself, is, there's certain things that he has commanded us. But giving to receive is not one of them, and that's what I want to show you with this scripture found in Acts chapter 17. It says, in verse 22 of 17, book of Acts. Then Paul stood in the midst of Mars Hill and said, Ye men of Athens, I perceive that in all things ye are too superstitious. For as I passed by and beheld your devotions, I found an altar with this inscription, To the unknown God. I believe they was talking about the Most High, because in, in Greece or whatever, they worship many gods. He said, whom therefore ye ignorantly worship, him declare I unto you. God that made the world and all things therein said that he is, is the most high. It says Lord, but the word Lord means boss, so I don't like to use the word Lord. Like I told you, there's some things in the scripture that are, are mistranslated, poorly translated. And you may hear me at times, you listen to my messages, you may hear me at times correcting certain words. That he is most high of heaven and earth. Dwelleth not in temples made with hands. Uh oh. That goes your 10% fake preacher. Neither is worship with men's hands. As though he needed anything. Now I heard the comedian George Carlin. You, If he was still alive. I would love for him to hear this. That he talked about how they always need money. Well the most high don't need money. As though he needed anything, see it, he give it to all life and breath and all things, and have made of one blood all nations of men, for to dwell on all the face of the earth, and have determined the times before employment, and the bounds of their habitation, that they should seek Yah, if happily they might fear after him, and find him, though he be not far from him. For in him we live and move and have our own our being. 
as certain also of your own poets have said, for we are also his offspring. Let me tell you something. The word breath is associated with the word ruach, which also means spirit. And Yehoshua made it clear to us that the Most High is a spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. So for you to become a true worshiper, you have to understand that the Most High is not with you for what you can give him. And you should not be with the Most High for what he should give you. In a relationship, you have to learn to, to be with that person because you want to be with that person. Not because you have to be with that person. And I'm going to make a sermon. The next one, I'm gonna, the next broadcast that I'm going to make has to do with that subject. Because a lot of people out there need to understand that you shouldn't be mad at the Most High for what you don't have. We shouldn't be mad at the Most High when we become sick and things of that nature. We should be with Him as true worshipers. Because He's with us as a true God. Is gambling a sin? No. It's not a sin to have the desire to gain more. Not a sin. It's not a sin. Because the scripture plainly says in Deuteronomy 8 and 18 that he gives us the power to get wealth. And the scripture plainly says in the parable of the talents, parable of the pounds, that the Most High does not like the unprofitable servant. He likes the servant that's willing to take chances to be, pro to, to be productive, excuse me, I'm stuttering, and to gain more. So with that, I'm going to close. I hope you understand what I was saying in the sermon today. If you don't, look up some definitions. Send me a question. I'll gladly answer any of your questions. I answer questions all the time, and I ask questions from other people all the time. So if you have any questions, feel free to ask me. Because if you're saying that gambling is a sin then you're going against the lawgiver because he said nothing about it. He made a few statements about money, but he didn't talk about gambling. He talked about stealing. It's a sin to steal. It's a sin to kill. It's a sin to covet. It's a sin to bow down to other gods. But it's not a sin if a person chooses to go get a lottery ticket or a post person chooses to, to go somewhere with a lot of noises and, and lights and, and and just wants to get away from the house and wants to go to a casino or something or a horse track or something. That's just, or play a fantasy draft. Come on. Get out of here with that. That's your commandments. And with that, I'm going to close. This is Prophet David Howard Jr. signing off.